xin chào quý vị khán giả kính thưa quý vị trong chương trình ngày hôm nay chúng tôi rất là hân hạnh một lần nữa tiếp chuyện với một nam tài tử đến từ thành phố Los Angeles xuống đây thưa quý vị vào thứ năm này thì cuốn phim Fast and Furious 6 sẽ được trình chiếu trong vùng Bắc Mỹ vào ngày 6 tháng 6 thì cuốn phim Fast and Furious 6 sẽ được ra mắt ở bên Úc Châu đó là nam tài tử Sang Kang một lần nữa trở lại với chương trình thưa quý vị và anh thì trong những năm qua cũng rất là bận rộn và mấy tháng trước thì anh đã xuất hiện chung trong một cuốn phim với nam tài tử đó là chắc chắn quý vị không xa lạ cho cuốn phim Bullet to the Head và đó là nam tài tử Sylvester Stallone và phim mới nhất mà sẽ bắt đầu trình chiếu rộng rãi trong vùng Bắc Mỹ cuối tuần này đó là Fast and Furious 6 thưa quý vị và tôi xin được tiếp chuyện với nam tài tử Sang Khanh bằng tiếng Anh và mong là quý vị sẽ um, theo dõi cái cuộc phỏng vấn đặc biệt sau đây. First of all, thank you so much for coming back once again. It's oh, been over you. a year. I know you've been busy. Just came back from doing the world tour, so probably not haven't sleep well. Yes, because you travel so much. It was a jet lag, you know. It hits you in the face around two in the morning, but I'm recovering. <laughs> Beautiful LA weather. It's been oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. So speaking of travel the world, which country so far is your favorite place to to stay? Uh, you know, the, we shot in um, Fast and Furious. When we were doing Fast and Furious Six, we shot in the Canary Islands mm -hmm. in Tenerife for about two weeks, and um, it's one of the most peaceful cities I've ever, or the places I've ever been. It's like almost like a city out of Ernest Hemingway book, like Old Man in the Sea. Mm. Everything is really slow and, you know, there's no real Western influence there. And um, it's, you know, it's, I think it's like 20 years behind everything. And, really? Yeah, and it almost getting kind of, you know, taken out of this, like, you know, this Western kind of, you know, rhythm where you have to slow down, you know, um, was a really awesome experience for me so so which mean you probably had to be at a pub you probably had to go to a pub like every other day or every day because it's is a pub pub thing is a, a, a very a well known no, no, is, really. are there a lot of pubs where where you were at no actually no? not it was just a lot of family run restaurants oh you know where the you know like the mother and the you know the kids would work there and mom and pop yeah right? you know, like a, it's a fishing community so you know there's a lot of fresh tuna and oh, nice. there and spanish speaking so you go there and i'm the you know el chino which is oh. the chinese guy <laughs> right? el chino. yeah but they you know, after like the third time you go there they embrace you you know the the and Spanish you told them you're not Chinese, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. But, you know, it's, not a, it's actually not derogatory, <laughs> okay. really, you know? So, yeah. It's, yeah. As um, long as they don't call you, like, that oriental guy. Yes. Because yes. that would be really bad. Yes. Right? Yeah. Well, I don't think political correctness has gone to Tenerife yet. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, now you also share with me that you also were in London for four months. Yes. And how was London? How's the people? We were there during the Olympics. Right, so when the Olympics just started, we oh started gosh. shooting there, and um, so that energy was awesome to be a part of, you know, and people from all over the world in that city, um, and being able to, you know, participate and celebrate that was awesome. It was a great way to start the production off, and um, you know, the 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 UK crews, the most amazing crews that I've ever worked with, uh, and because you know, you know, I asked I asked that too, and you know, and it's it seems like. You know the the approach of the, the British in film is that that craft is kind of passed down mm -hmm. from their parents, like generationally. It's almost like a cobbler, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, you know, it's not this kind of like transient, like let's go have a Hollywood dream type of thing. I think you were kind of born into it. So mm -hmm. it, it, they approach it like a craftsman, and you know, the unions are different. You know, it's not union based. So they say that you know it takes like, you know two British to the work of seven Americans, not because based on like, you know, any type of work ethic difference, it's just that they're unions. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the dialogue is a lot quicker. There's less bureaucracy to kind of go through. And if something needs to be done, you know, two people just handle it, you know, so. So did you, did you go to the Olympics last year when you yeah. were there? I tried to, I tried to go to one of the basketball games and, you know, tickets were really hard to come by. I think some seats were selling for like 2,000 pounds, which, you know, is Crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Oh so my goodness. I tried to go and see as many free things as I could, like the right. marathon runners and the Roy Wave. Right, time. right. But, you know, you know, as soon as you step out of your house um, or your hotel, you know, it's all around you, mm -hmm. you know, so you can kind of just be a part of it without actually 
going to the events. Um, you know, and I tried, but it was, it, was, it was very difficult, so. You mentioned basketball. I just have to ask you, since you live in L.A., yeah. which team are you rooting for? Lakers or Clippers? You know, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like the Clippers always had a bad rap, you know, <laughs> and I'm like an underdog guy, and so I know Clippers are doing great, and I, I will root for the Clippers based on that. You know, oh. Lakers, they can afford to buy the best players. But right? yet they were shitty. I'm sorry, my language. Yeah. Horrible. I mean, yeah, I mean, they this can't be champions season. every year, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. So you're, okay, so yeah. you're a Clippers. Uh... Yeah, supporter. Supporter, yeah. not fans yet. Well, I'm not from LA. I'm from Georgia, so you know. Ah, so you said you have to root for the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, even though I mean they did okay this year. I right? know. Yeah, I know this. Okay. Better than last couple yeah. years. Yeah. So you would never switch from Atlanta to Clippers. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. You know. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, clear out of the way. Yeah. Um, so, so now I saw this film the other night, and I thought I had such a blast. I don't care what people say, but I had fun. Um, I thought the energy of your character with the rest, especially your love interest, she's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Beautiful. So did you find it easier the second time around to, to work with her in Fast 6? Oh, definitely, because, you know, from Fast 5, we actually, um, when that relationship was formed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we became friends, you know, um, you know, off the set. and. She turned out to be just one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And not only is she like Miss Israel and this, you know, beautiful model, um, you know, at the end of it, she's an amazing mother. Mm -mm. She's an amazing friend. She's an amazing wife, amazing daughter. You know, and you and you realize why you know she's you know sought after from Hollywood because it's not just the beauty; it's this internal beauty she has, and um, that friendship was developed and the respect. And I think. The Han and Giselle character, it's not a relationship that's just convenient. It's actually earned. And mm -hmm. I think in Fast 6, Justin Lin constantly tries to you know, make sure that the audience is aware that this relationship is going to be earned mm -hmm. by them. right? And through the actions that you say in each other's lives and et cetera. But that was easy for us because you know, I, she had earned my respect anyway as Gal Gadot, the person behind the character. So. I feel very fortunate to be able to co-star with you know someone like her. You mentioned Justin. I'm sure by now you're very comfortable working with Justin because you guys have been working together with what, six films. Seven. Seven. Yeah. And then you did three fast already. Oh, actually, it is six films. Six right? films, yeah, yeah, right? Six films, yeah. So by now, I mean, you only can read his eyes or his face expression without him really have to give you any sort of directions yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. Yes. Do you find it easier by like? this time around just because besides he's your good friend but also on set I understand that you guys are very professional you you trying to keep it professional and do you find it easier even though you don't really talk a lot on set definitely I mean there's a shorthand that's developed over the years mm -hmm. where we don't have to sit down and you know, you know dissect what's going on in our heads and mm -hmm. and there is no you know posturizing there's no formality it's just you know we just get to the work and um, and to be able to play a character, you know, five times from Better Luck Tomorrow and four Fast and Furious movies, you know, that's already pretty awesome as an actor. And to be able to work with the same director, so, you know, in these movies, you know, there's so much going on for the director. Mm -hmm. He has so many hats he has to wear. Mm. Um, and I think as a friend, and you know, I think the benefit for both of us as a friend is that because we have that shorthand, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't have to worry about me. He doesn't have to worry if I'm okay, or you know, I know what he's thinking, or do I get his, you know, is, is he okay with my performance? He'll say something if, you know, he needs to say something. Mm. And I don't need validation, I don't need a pat on the back. It's that he'll say something if we need to change it. Otherwise, we, you know, just keep moving forward because there's a million things to deal with, mm -hmm. you know. I, I do enjoy some of the scenes you're with uh, Tyree's character because he's quite funny. Yeah. This character, he's so rich, but yet he's such a stingy guy, right? Yeah. So I was thinking that's supposed to be like, you know, we Asians have really bad rap because we're stingy and we're cheap mm -hmm. and whatnot. But it's kind of interesting to see his character as being the other stingy and cheap guy. How would you define your relationship with some of these guys? in Fast 6? Did you find it like he's, Han is a lot more 
Yeah, I, I don't know. He knows his team so well. He's, I mean, remember the last time when you were here, we talked about he, he likes to eat. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he's constantly munching and something. Mm -hmm. For this Fast 6, how did you define his character uh, compared to Fast 5? Like, is there anything different that we didn't catch in Fast 6? You know, in, in Fast Five, the I think the major purpose for Han to be in that movie was to establish this love line with you know, with Gal Gadot, Giselle character, and I think it was very on the surface, mm -hmm. right? It was like, wow, she's so beautiful, mm -hmm. she's so cool, she's like, you know, she can drive. I, you know, I'm uh, I'm in love with that, right? Um, but in Fast Six, you know, to Justin's credit, is that you know, he wanted this relationship not to be convenient mm -hmm. that, oh, they're just together because it's convenience. Mm -hmm. It's that throughout, it has to be earned. I mean, there was a purpose to this relationship. Mm -hmm. was that you know, people, I think, in life feel like, yeah, you know, if I have money or if I'm good looking, then, you know, um, somebody will just love me and I deserve that. Mm -hmm. But it's not that, you know. It doesn't matter what you look like and how much money you have in the bank account, you know, a real relationship is earned, mm -hmm. you know. and. Hard work. Yeah, and you know we did it in the Fast and Furious world where you know we're saving each other's lives on cool cars and motorcycles. But I think at the end of it, you know, the core of it, you know, was something real and sincere that you know I know that Justin was trying to convey, you know. Um, and so, you know, we, we const I had to constantly think about that. Mm -hmm. Is that you know you can't just look cool. You know, it's actually how are you going to gain this woman's respect? Mm -hmm. You know, and how. Do you get to a point where you would take the bullet for her and you would, she would take the bullet for you? It's no longer about you. It's about that other person, yeah. right? And, and for me, that's an amazing thing that you know, I think the Han character represents. And I think the whole theme of Fast and Furious 6 and 5 that Justin implements about this family. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And you know, will you die for your family? Will you really die for your family or your wife or the person you love? And, Lip service, I think a lot of people would say, yeah, sure, you know, but would you really, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes down to it? And, you know, and, and that's a question posed, and, you know, I think at the end of it, these people would do that, yeah. right? And it's, so it's kind of a beautiful thing at the end of the day. I think so too. So, vâng, thưa quý vị, xin quý vị khán thính giả vẫn tiếp tục giữ màn hình SPTN. Chúng tôi sẽ trở lại trong giây lát.